We acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands on which this podcast has been produced and we pay our respects to Elders past and present. I would like them to know I am not about being aged. I have had a full life. I've had a job of responsibilities. They are wasting a huge resource by not tapping into all these skills and knowledge that we have. And it was just the assumption that because I was a little bit older than him and grey hair and that I wouldn't possibly know how to do that. And I do want to be respected and not called dearie or lover. Let them see, you know, that yes, you want to be there. It's not just a job. It's not just a paycheck, you know. It's your passion. Welcome to Snack, the aged care podcast where we break down some of the big questions around what it really means to be person-centred. I'm Dr Andrea Petrisky. I'm a gerontologist and I'm passionate about hearing and sharing the real-life experiences of ageing. In this episode, we take a deeper look at something we hear a lot about, but we can find it a bit hard to face. Ageism, attitudes and bias. Now, no one likes to think they might be ageist or they might not be coming to their work with quite the right attitude. But sometimes we can do it without meaning to or without even realising it. Something we might think is a funny joke, a helpful gesture or in someone's best interest can actually be quite the opposite. So how do we recognise ageism? Why do attitudes matter so much in home care? And what could we do differently? First up today, we're talking about the importance of attitudes, your attitude to your work, to the people you're supporting, to their homes. I want to share with you some conversations we had with Naomi and Diane. Naomi's supported in her home by a number of different care staff, and Diane has experience as both a provider and a recipient of care services. So Diane, why do people's attitudes matter? So if carers are trained in how to do care tasks really well, why does it matter how they approach their work? It really is having somebody come into your home. We have to trust them. They must show us respect. And you do get 99% are fantastic. Mm. But you will always get the one. Um, I've had one who came in, basically didn't speak, didn't introduce herself, really seemed to be resentful of having to do the work and that I really should be grateful to her. Mm. She, she's definitely the minority, but it really makes you wonder whether you should be continuing with the service or not when you've had that sort of an experience. Yeah, so even with having good experiences, even having just one bad experience like that is enough to make you question your relationship of trust with the organisation. It is, it is. And... It's uh, very much a felt thing that, um, mm. you know, at the end of the service, how are you feeling? Are you feeling happy and, and waving them goodbye and saying thank you very much? Or are you sort of thinking, oh, I wish they'd hurry up and go? Our next guest, Naomi, is supported in her home by a number of different care staff. Naomi, respect shown both ways is really critically important, isn't it? The uh, service carers that I have, the second the second lady who came, she asked me a question. I answered it, and she rolled her eyes, <laughs> and I, <laughs> which uh, didn't go down very well. And she sat down for fifteen minutes, which I wasn't too happy about. And she'd only been there a couple of weeks, but there's no there's no excuse for that. They've just got to have their heart in their job. One lady came and she had the next day, the, the day off. I was her last client and she raced through the place and couldn't get out of, the, out of there fast enough. Mm. What would you like our listeners to hear about what good examples look like? Well, uh, just listen and just if... If I ask them to do something, please do it, and they do. They're just wonderful. Um, I just want respect because it's it's it works both ways. We expect it back, but it's not it, it it's not always given back. 
They were some really important reminders from Diane and Naomi that showing respect is vitally important and every interaction you have with someone matters. Showing respect isn't just in how you speak to someone when you're in their home. People can feel it by the way you are when you're with them. Now, one very big problem around attitudes is attitudes towards ageing and older people. And unfortunately, ageism is a huge issue in the community and in the aged care sector itself. I caught up with Celsi, who's very involved in her community, including as a volunteer. Here's what Celsi shared with us. Sometimes in the community, we can even see just downright scary disrespect. Have you seen any examples of that in your community? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, I have. <laughs> I'll tell you a little story about the um, experience I had just recently. I had a conversation with a 30 plus mother of two. And to my surprise, she said, um, why are they pouring all this money and resources into older people? when they're just going to die soon anyway. Oh, wow. And I, oh, that's she went on to say, the budget only has so much money to go around. So her opinions and attitudes absolutely shocked me because as an older person myself, uh, I felt very vulnerable and I hopefully I, I won't, but if and when I do need it, felt quite guilty about asking for help and, and accepting money from the government uh, because I'm as an older mm. person. And I couldn't help thinking, um, you know, uh, we're not that important. Do we lose our our value and our importance as we age? Do people not, not value that anymore? Are our lives not important to anybody anymore? So what do you do in your own life to try to address those kinds of attitudes? Um, well, um, when I'm around my grandchildren, I try to lead by example, actually, and I just show an interest in older people, uh, not just older people, but everybody. And, you know, I'll ask them about themselves, talk to them, listen to their stories. And, and if, if we can help, you know, if you can help, help them in any way, just help them, give them a helping hand. And it just sort of shows them that, um, that you know, if they want to earn respect in their own lives, they'll get that respect if they treat others kindly and respectfully too. Oh, I actually believe respect is a learned skill too. So um, we have to teach our young people how to respect themselves. Um, before they can actually respect other people. Diane, who we heard from earlier in this episode, also shared some experiences from her community. I was with a group of four people the other day and I asked them, first of all, what did they understand about ageism and had they experienced ageism? And these words were overlooked, they don't count. It's more important for the younger persons to get the health care. Their assets uh, need to be passed to their children and they feel invisible. We've all experienced ageism, um, unintentional or intentional. And at times I'm sure people are not aware um, that they're actually being ageist, but um, that doesn't mean it doesn't um, impact on the person. I have an example. You're in a shop um, waiting to be served. You're next. They serve the person that's coming after you. So I just said, you obviously don't want to serve me today, and I walked out. Yeah. Because I was invisible to them. In our conversations with members of the community, we hear many, many stories about ageist attitudes. Lots of these are in situations like shops or shopping centres, in healthcare, and generally in the community or even within people's own families. For example, Jude shared with us that she sometimes feels like health providers won't properly discuss her condition with her and assume she won't understand. Nola shared an experience of a neighbour making assumptions about her ability to use technology. Maureen spoke to us about feeling ignored and invisible in shops. On the flip side of that, we've also heard about positive experiences, including this one from Jill, who's a care professional with many years' experience. Some people find that, uh, you know, as an ageing person in a care industry, that that can be a little bit challenging, but I've had some really very positive, lovely experiences 
And I've always felt that my age has been a positive in offering life skills particularly and life experience uh, for client support. It's a kind of wisdom that comes with age and it makes clients mm-hmm. feel secure. So you found that to be actually really beneficial to your care relationships? It, it did and it has. It does. It's um, You just get the sense that um, your life, my, well, my, well, I probably should say my life, is mm. valued by the client actually. They're, they're all so interested in me in a mm. way that I'm interested in them and knowing, you know, oh, you were a carer once and you know what carer burnout's all about. And being able to talk about those things from a lived experience, it's really helpful. And age is um, really quite complementary to lived experience. We also heard from Maureen about the great experiences she had with the staff who support her. And we asked Maureen if there's a particular skill or something she feels personal care workers need to do. I think it's coming in with an open mind and accepting that They're not assuming that I'm an old lady that needs lots of help. I'm quite independent, but I'm quite happy to admit there are lots of things that I do need help with. We do have past life experiences and wisdom, and we still Mm. have some skills. So what would you share as a good example for new care workers starting out about how to show really good respectful attitudes towards older people? Lots of things can be resolved by communicating, finding out what people need, having a genuine empathy for them or their condition or their age um, and never assuming that you know what they want. The ways ageist attitudes can impact care are well known to the folks at ADA Australia, so we spoke with two of their advocates, Lizzie and Renee. We first asked Lizzie what they see happening in their work. I think it is very pervasive within the structure and the model of care. A lot of it's sitting in our unconscious bias. As advocates, we're very much having a perspective where we're working with older people that are coming to us because of issues, concerns, complaints, uh, things that aren't right with their care and services. And there'll be all sorts of issues sitting at the surface that so much and so many of those issues are really stemming from those attitudes of ageism and discrimination it's in the way that older people are spoken to where I don't know how, how often we see where someone will start directing the conversation to maybe a younger person that's with the older person rather than to the older person themselves. It's so much in our behaviour Um, when we're interacting with older people that, again, I think, unfortunately, sometimes there is intention behind that. Yeah, so what would you like home care providers and home care staff to be doing differently? What would you like them to know? So, again, I think we need a lot more training, a lot more education, um, and, again, we need to be constantly challenging that unconscious bias, really encouraging a self-reflective practice where we're all constantly reflecting on how we are interacting to identify identify where our strengths and weaknesses are and how we can do things better. I think Mm. as a society at large, we really need to look at the way we think and treat older people. I I think we're a long way from having that really strong culture of respect for our elders. Renee, what are some of the examples you see of things our listeners need to think about and challenge for themselves? 
When people are speaking to an older person um, in this context rudely or shortly, they might think that they're not, they're just working fast or whatever, but it's really obvious. We see it a lot. So treating older people like they're a infant is just absolutely ghastly. Like I've lost count of the amount of times when I've um, been with older people that I'm working with and someone will come over and say, Andrea, shh, inside voice well done. That's great. You know, and you sort of sometimes think, wow, is this a kindergarten? And it can also be about asking questions. Some people really like to have the door opened for them and other people sort of see that a little bit like, oh gosh, they don't even think I can open a door, you know? So it's actually saying, would you like me to get the door for you? Because some people are actually, you know, they find that as they're aging, people are maybe being what they think is more helpful, but it's coming across as you don't have the capacity anymore. To finish up today, I want to share a conversation we had with Mona, who received services in her home and has also worked in aged care herself and has been an active consumer representative and advocate nationally. We asked Mona what she would like you to know about respect and person-centeredness. It's simply a matter of respecting that the person is an individual human being with human rights. And um, unfortunately, this is not often the case in aged care, where the perception of older people is one of being frail, vulnerable, not quite with it, not up with the latest trends in technology, all suffering from cognitive decline, being needy, and not contributing to their communities, being a burden on society. Uh, We have a lot to offer as older people. Um, And all anyone needs to do is to listen to what we have to say and find out that older people also make a lot of sense and can still be of great value to society. We want to be acknowledged. We want to tell everybody that we were like them once and we now need just for somebody to support us the way we need to be supported, Mm. not as we're told we are supposed to be supported. So what we suggest is to just listen, ask, and do whatever you think is best within your own capability. We'll appreciate that immensely. We've heard some great examples from all our guests today about not only the ways that attitudes and particularly attitudes of respect can be experienced, but also how that affects people. It's clear that it's not just about what you say, but how you act and how you are. And it's the responsibility of all of us individually as care staff, as family members, as members of the community to look at our own attitudes and what messages we might be giving or what we might be seeing others do that isn't showing respect. That's today's snack. Thank you so much for joining us and a big thank you to our guests for sharing their insights and ideas. If you want to find out more, you'll find some great resources and other good stuff on our website, kotaqld.org.au. You'll find links in the show notes. And please don't forget to subscribe wherever you get your podcasts to make sure you get the next episode as soon as it's out. Until next time, thanks again and goodbye from the Coda Queensland team. This podcast is part of the Home Care Workforce Support Program, which received grant funding from the Australian Government.